Um, okay, next item, let's turn to our superintendent's report. Thank you, Chair Moss. Good morning, board members. I love to walk into this room and be surrounded by student artwork. I don't know about you, but it just fills my soul. And um, so today we're going to start with employee recognition. We'll move into our presentation of the student artwork, and then I'll share my report. Um, I had the pleasure of getting on a call with Deanna Taylor and her fans. And I have never felt so much love for an employee. There were tears of joy and appreciation. It was a delightful uh, time to get to know Deanna a little bit better and understand the important role that she plays. Deanna serves as our transition specialist for students with disabilities when they transition from, from um, high school to post-secondary opportunities. And she comes to our agency with just such a wealth of knowledge and um, information and skill. I, I won't go through her whole um, nomination, which was just one of the most outstanding I think I've ever read, but I want to share a few things that she's done. She um, She's organized and implemented a course, a transition canvas course, so that all of our LEAs who have transition specialists really know best practices. So she works with everybody out in our um, out in our schools who work with students with disabilities to make sure that they they know the strategies and have the resources they need to help our students transition and really help them understand how we can have high aspirations that can really actualize possibilities for our students. She's in the process of creating a micro-credential stack that focuses on post-secondary transition and it will support the growth of all of our Utah educators. She has also helped in creating coherence and alignment between compli compliance and effective practices, which is really a, both a skill and an art. You know, we're, we're called on at our office to do both, and she's done so very well. She's an advocate for educators and students with disabilities to reach their full potential, and you really get that when you talk to her. Um, she really has an asset-based mindset. She's an exemplary employee when it comes to collaboration. And this is what everybody on the call talked about, how she works endlessly to ensure that everyone has a voice at the table and that the outcome from that collaboration produces something. It's not just conversation, but from that co collaboration, we have tools, resources, and information necessary to improve practice. The special education compliance team has been able to rely on Deanna and her support with coaching efforts to our schools. And it's been fantastic to be able to see um, all of the effective instruction that's happening as a result of the mon monitoring reviews. Uh, they, get, um, they get help and support and feedback about compliance while simultaneously really learning how to improve practices. Her work with our higher education partners and other agencies like um, vocational rehabilitation, our state and federal technical assistance centers, um, our USBE staff and LEA staff, I mean, just think about her sphere of influence. We can't even begin to describe it. So there was, there's just a lot of love and support for Deanna on our staff, and we want to introduce her to you and congratulate her on being Employee of the Month. <laughs> and with that, Kelly, I don't, are you introducing Art today? Thank you, Kelly. Hello, thank you for having me today. My name is Kelly Bruce Glenn. I am an education specialist in the fine arts here at USBE. Um, so our first video that we're gonna see today is BTS Music Art Educator Ashley Toogood at Fremont Elementary in Davis School District. Students learned this call and response song from Africa where they explored different rhythms and collaborated to create an ensemble music performance.
Our next video is from BTS music educator Kim Montano at Winridge Elementary in Davis School District. Um, they actually brought their learning to the Davis School District board meeting. They shared some of their experience with music and science integrating uh, through an ostinato. So students used vocabulary from their science lesson paired with body percussions to support key ideas learned throughout the lesson. And then our last performing arts, you're going to see BTS dance educator uh, Shara Huckins and her students at Wasatch Elementary School in Salt Lake City School District. Um, they're presenting their self-choreographed piece that connects to Pando. So students choreographed this piece to explore dance spatial pathways that connect it to their science studies of organisms and their functions. So that piece is about six minutes long, and we only saw just a short clip of all of that great work. And then I'll present the visual art that's in the room. So these pieces are uh, shared with us through Weber State University, the Arts Learning Collaborative, which is one of the BTS Arts University partners. Um, so I'll start with this piece right here, closest to me on my right-hand side. Um, so you'll see the work of BTS visual art educator Jana Ma in Weber School District. In their homeroom class, students were reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. They noticed Charlie's dad, a character in the book, worked in a toothpaste factory and wondered what other uh, purposes toothpaste might have. Students connected with their art teacher and they experimented with materials by combining toothpaste and acrylic paint, which they then used to create Warhol-inspired Campbell soup cans on canvases. Our next piece in the center is also by Janama and her students. They are trees in the Art Nouveau style. Students learned about artist Gustav Klimt and used bright colors, swirling lines, and curves to create their own pieces. For this for me, you're going to see work from visual art educators in Davis School District under the direction of BTS Arts instructional coach Katie Francis. Uh, in this piece, students created abstract flowers with chalk, marker, and pen to explore various art mediums. And then we'll move over to the left side and you'll see uh, work also by Davis School District where students identified color palettes. They compared and contrasted relationships between primary colors, secondary colors, and then their colors of choice. Our last piece of art in the back of the room is by the Utah Art Education Association. It's titled Creativity Through Community. So this year they had their annual spring conference that was held last weekend in Moab and had over 300 art educators there to participate in hands-on arts learning experiences. Um, with their help, uh, they created this lovely piece of art in the back of the room that shared all of the things that they learned through this conference. And then we have one last piece of art that you may have seen and I'm gonna have Lisa Clough quickly introduce that. Thank you, board. I'm Lisa Clough with Artworks for Kids. And you have a box in front of you. Um, students from Benyon, Franklin, Indian Hills, and Salt Lake Virtual 
worked on these projects. They learned about Utah animals and then made a clay piece themselves, painted it. And it is a thank you to you for, for your support of the program with the legislature this session. So appreciate all that you do and your support of the program. Beverly would, would say thank you as well. So I appreciate you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Kelly and Lisa. Thanks for filling our soul with all that wonderful uh, support from our Beverly Taylor um, Sorensen Art Specialist. So with my report, I'm going to share two elements. First, I'm going to share a, a lot of love. And second, I'm going to share some um, love for risk mitigation. So those will be the two components of, of my um, remarks. This morning on the drive-in, I was listening to KSL, and they um, have been reporting live from our high schools during the school year on Thursdays. And this morning they were at Grantsville High, and they were interviewing a student named Blake who was describing his role as a spirit leader in the school. And I thought, what a great role. He talked about how he introduces assemblies and um, just works, to, works with all sorts of students and educators to try and impact the culture at the school by being a spirit leader. And I thought about the legislative session and how we have so many spirit leaders here on staff who really keep us going and thinking about the ups and downs of the session and how sometimes it was quite a challenge to keep our spirits up and sometimes our spirits were really high when um, we all accomplished something together on behalf of our students. So we have spirit leaders that really keep us going throughout the year. And I'm gonna riff on, um, on your excellent presentation this morning, Board Member Davis. It was just really profound. Um, so thinking about the spirit that, that's behind the work that gets done, I would say our chief spirit leader is Deputy Stallings. Um, she has a Rolodex in her mind of not only what's going on in the moment, but she truly has this historical Rolodex and she can connect prior legislation and rules and she is our chief spirit leader that really um, carries us through throughout the session. So I want to give a special shout out to Deputy Stallings and her staff for um, just her amazing positive spirit and all of the knowledge and skill that she carries and, and keeps us going. But behind the scenes, we have um, people who weigh in on fiscal notes and policy. So you're going to see a little bit of data that Ryan pulled together for us um, for uh, Ryan sent out an email to all of our directors and said, could you possibly count up the hours that you have spent behind the scenes on legislation? And I will um, give a shout out to Dr. Thronson who said, you know, in teaching and learning, I don't even know that we can count the hours because we <laughs> had a, a giant spreadsheet and we were tracking every bill and almost every content specialist needed to weigh in at some point. And, you know, these fiscal notes come to us at sometimes it feels like midnight and we have to turn it around. And so you have people who are counting up, you know, what would it take and what are the resources? And a lot of that falls to teaching and learning. So bless all the staff for teaching and learning for um, their quick response, rapid response. We also have an another section in student support. And we had a lot of bills around school safety and um, mental health and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of various elements that we needed to weigh in on. And I think I could, say that they spent the same amount of time, um, both on the Hill, waiting online in case they were called on. I mean, I remember Chantel Cota, who probably spent three hours in a committee, and, and we didn't even get to her item. And, and, and then another meeting where we did get to her item, and I stepped all over her and made the comments while she'd been waiting, and I forgot she was there. So this is just the way our staff rolls, and they're so positive about it. And then here's some additional statistics. In student data privacy, I appreciate we have such a great team, and Katie and her team, they really look through all of the bills for student data privacy, particularly those that have a data element. So they reviewed both the bills and the substitutes. Um, they attended a bunch of committee hearings, and then of course they spend time behind the scenes discussing and thinking about proposed language that could even further protect our student data. Uh, in financial operations, I'm sure that they under counted or underestimated the time they really spent. But they, they um, looked at 485 bills and substitutes. So think about 
the hours that went into those 485 bills, counting that up. And again, behind every one of those is a lot of staff time going into giving input. Um, special education, there were presentations and attendance. And you know, I, I don't think that there was anybody on our staff who wasn't a touch point at some point in time with, that was redundant, sorry, um, but that they were um, a touch point with a piece of legislation during the session. So just huge shout out to our spirit leaders, which is pretty much everybody in our, um, in our office during the legislative session. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I want to share a little love for risk mitigation. We have truly learned to embrace risk mitigation. We are risk averse in this agency, and we try very hard to um, assess risk. And one of the things that came out of an audit was just really looking at roles and responsibilities. Do we have those clearly defined? <coughs> so our director of strate strategic initiatives, Todd Call, who is a great systems thinker, worked to put a tool in place to mitigate this risk that was pointed out in an audit. And this is something that you all um, have been asking for, and I think as new board members especially, this will really help you. So we're going to ask Todd to share um, what he has developed with help from others, of course. But Todd has led this initiative, so Director Call. Great, thank you, Superintendent, and thank you, board members. My name is Todd Call, and I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives here at the Utah State Board of Education. And I'm excited to, to share with you a tool and a project, uh, an initiative that I've been working on with a number of others over the last several, uh, several months. And as Superintendent mentioned, there were two main drivers to us creating an agency-wide organization chart. And first was in response to an audit. And if, if you're familiar with this audit, uh, it recommended that we look for ways to improve our internal controls here at the State Board of Education and specifically uh, calls out the Green Book, which if you are unfamiliar has uh, five components and, and 17 principles that should be in place in an organization that has a, a robust internal control system. And we were encouraged to, to learn more about those principles, to study them and to discuss them in, in different leadership settings. And so we've been doing that for the last several months. And as we looked at some of these components around the control environment and uh, risk assessment, and looked at some of the, the mitigation strategies that we might be able to implement at the State Board of Education to, to mitigate some of these risks and to improve our internal controls, we identified the, the creation of an agency-wide organization chart as, as one way to take a, a positive step in that direction. And uh, as you can imagine, there are a number of, of positive reasons or, or benefits to creating an agency-wide organization chart, and in fact, even here within our organization, we've had a number of teams and sections that have already created their own uh, smaller teams or bigger sections, and they were a largely static PDFs that spoke to maybe the hierarchy or, or the supervisory um, roles within, an, within a, a section or, or team. But up until now, there hasn't been an agency-wide organization chart. So uh, in addition to responding to the audit, we feel that it helps add transparency uh, internally so that we know who to connect with within our agency as, as staff members, as well as for you all to know who that you might be able to connect and collaborate with and what the individual roles and responsibilities are of each team member throughout the entire agency. So I want to explain just briefly the process that we went through to get where we are today and know that we're continuing to iterate and, and take steps going forward. We met with the previous board leadership team a few months ago and proposed this plan of creating this agency-wide organization chart and with their support asked that they identify the primary roles and responsibilities of the five staff members who report directly to them. And they did that and we captured that information and then we went through a cascade exercise throughout the entire agency over the course of a couple of months where those five direct reports uh, to the board, then if they had team members, went to their team and had a similar exercise of helping each of their team members identify their roles and responsibilities in alignment to those that had been assigned to them and ultimately in alignment to the board's mission and vision. And we went through this process through supervisor to supervisor, team by team, until every last team member here in the agency had an opportunity to have a better understanding and conversation around what their individual roles and responsibilities are in alignment to all of those that had been assigned previous to them 
and having a, a direct line all the way up to board leadership of how their roles and their individual responsibilities support the overall mission and vision and the strategic plan efforts here at the State Board of Education. So we've been going through that process and it's been a process with a lot of help and collaboration from so many and we've gathered all that information and so we worked uh, collaboratively with Jared Felt and the IT team and Michelle Watts and the HR team to then bring all of that together and to, to have a tool that I'd like to demonstrate here just briefly for you today uh, to show the organization structure and the primary responsibilities of every team member in the entire agency, which is roughly around 400 team members. When uh, we'll play this, this short screen capture here in just a minute, but I want to just quickly highlight some of the key features that you'll see within this tool, and then I'll walk you through just a short example of, of how it works. You have the ability when you visit the organization chart to search, and when you search, you can do that by individual team members or staff members, so if you know their name or if anyone does, you can put their name in and it'll pull up uh, their information, or if you know their title, you can search by job title as well. Uh, when you click on any individual staff member, you will see their contact information. So you can quickly contact them by phone or email, as well as short tags that represent uh, the primary responsibilities that were identified through the cascade exercise that I, that I just mentioned. It does not include all of the language that we captured. Uh, we wanted it to be a, a quick kind of go-to and where you can see at a glance some of the, the key tags or, or words or phrases that represent each individual team member's primary responsibility. So you see contact information as well as those responsibilities listed for each staff member. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanna filter and just look at one specific section or team, you can use the, the filter feature to do that and see all of the, the staff members that are part of that section or team. And then again, by clicking on any individual staff member, you'll see more information to contact as well as what their roles and responsibilities are. Again, hopefully uh, through our exercise that, that show alignment all the way back to our, our mission and vision. So let's go ahead and play that and I'll just quickly walk you through. You'll notice that it's now available directly on our website. And this is the external view that we make public for anyone to be able to access. And you go to the contact page and then look for the directory. And when you do, it'll automatically load the most current information. And we're looking to build this into our onboarding and offboarding process to make sure that it's as up to date as possible. But you'll notice that you can filter and, and you can zoom in, you can expand, you can pull up any individual uh, staff member and see their contact information and responsibilities listed. Uh, as you expand all of this, you will see close to 400 uh, individual staff members with the same information listed with their individual uh, responsibilities. And then like I mentioned, if you wanna filter in this example, you just wanna see the operations, you can click on that and, and it'll just filter directly to all within operations. And hopefully this allows you to quickly navigate and find opportunities to collaborate with the right person about the right topic. Here's a, an example of filtering to student support and, and you can see the, the structure within this as well. If you're looking for a specific program and it's captured in an individual's title, uh, when you search for that, it'll pull up the individual as well. So a few different ways that you can access this and, and find the right people. And, and we'll do our best to, to build this into our processes to make sure that it has the most current and up-to-date information. So as we look forward at some of our next steps and, and what we uh, would invite all of you to do is, is to use this tool. I think there's one more slide just at the end. Um, there is a direct link to go to, but you can also navigate to it through the Contact Us page on, on our website. Um, but we're looking at some additional features. And again, our goal in all of this is to improve our internal controls. And so as we have discussions, uh, we believe there are a few additional ways that we can use this tool internally. So we'll be looking at rolling out some of those features to supervisors and, and to support staff and ultimately uh, hopefully taking steps in the right direction to uh, improve our transparency, to improve collaboration and, and efficiency. In addition to that, we are hosting a, a photo shoot, hopefully very soon. So those that maybe don't have a professional profile photo to include in the organization chart, we'll be supporting them in that. Or if they're looking for a new or updated version, uh, we'll be doing that as well. And, and hopefully it, it serves purpose for the organization chart as well as any other professional needs that they may have in, in their work here. 
But lastly, this is just one step in, in our direction to improve our internal controls and, and respond to, to our audit and, and increase transparency. And hopefully it's a, a value add to you as you look to connect with and collaborate with staff. Thank you. Thank you, Director Call. So um, back to you, Chair Moss, if you want to see if there are any questions or comments. I, I love this, by the way. I think both for internal and, and public-facing content of, of who we are and what we do, it, it's, it's wonderful. People want to know who to reach out to. We've, we've got processes we're going to talk about tomorrow in terms of internal discussion, reaching out from board members. It shows the work we're doing, which is complicated and heavy, and it puts it all in one place. So thank you. Any, any questions and comments from board members? We do have Representative Welton joining us at 10, but I think we don't have him yet. So as soon as he joins, and he's got a, a time certain because he's teaching. But till then, let's open it up. Member Norton. Um, I have a... Oh. Why? Go ahead. Okay. I just feel like I can't let our BTS... Um, presentation pass um, without reflecting that m about an event many of us had an opportunity to partake in earlier uh, this spring and and it shows the magic of a true educator and I'm, I'm thinking back when when they used the word in their um, body percussion I immediately went to Heber City and I know what body percussion is because of you, Randy. And it is a moment I will never forget in my life. And it, it just, it, it made me even a little bit emotional thinking about these great art educators that are making such a huge difference in the lives of our students and the great influence that you have made in my life as an art educator and a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Member Norton. Member Bogus. Well, that's hard to pass, you know, to like one up you there, Kristen. Um, I, I would agree, not necessarily that I was there, but art education is important. I want to just go back very quickly to the org chart and just thank you for your effort and um, and such. And for a person who learns like I do and functions like I do, thank you for the photographs. <laughs> I, I mean that sincerely, not as a joke, because there are times that I can tell you exactly what that person looks like but I have no clue what their title is or what their name is, and so thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Member Davis. Todd Call, this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so awesome. All right, any other board member comments or questions? Thank you. This, this is behind-the-scenes work that just really makes a difference. I mean, truly, again, both internally and externally. People need to know what we do and, and be able to recognize who to go to and understand how all this fits together to serve kids. So yeah, I join Cindy's just thank you very much. Um, okay, I don't think we have Representative Welton, so maybe we go back to Superintendent Dixon. Did you have more of a Superintendent's report? Or Completes my report, concluded? thank you, okay. sir. 